Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and we've got a couple of pieces of Blender news today, but this big one is going to be a huge impact for people that are doing Blender for game development, especially if you're doing raw polygon editing. Blender has just gotten a whole lot faster, and this is something that needed to happen because in Blender 2.8, Blender got a whole lot slower when it comes to dealing with editing meshes. And that's something, that's the bread and butter of game developers. So this is a pretty huge development. So what you see in front of you, this is Blender 3.8. Oh, this is the currently under development version. This is literally taken from the nightly build from a day or two ago. And I've also got Blender 2.80. Now, Blender 2.80 was a pretty big step forward from Blender 2.79 with a couple of regressions. A couple of the mesh editing tools went away. Uh, Boolean tools got worse. They've since been improved. But the biggest thing is the mesh editing speeds got pretty terrible. So what I'm going to do is showcase what things were like for Blender 2.80 and what they are like now with 3.0. And in the title card, I said three times faster. And to be honest, three times is underselling it. It's more so than that in my experiences. So here we are, Blender 2.80. We're going to use the uh, trusty default cube to do all of our examples here. And I'm just going to switch over into edit mode. And we're going to grab this guy who got all of the polygons selected. So there, we want everything selected, and we're going to go and subdivide this guy. And we want to have lots of polygons to work with to really showcase this. So uh, you'll see down here our polygon count. We're at 48 triangles, and I'm just going to repeat and rinse. We want to get this up to about three quarters of a million triangles. So we are now at our target. Now you're also going to notice the speed of what that took to actually do all those subdivisions. So now we got this guy selected. What I'm going to go ahead and do, deselect everything. We're going to go ahead and do a box select like so. And I'm just going to grab the corner of this guy right here. All right, with all that selected, I'm going to hit the G key. And now I am going to wait for a slideshow. Each time I move, this is painful. We're talking one frame per second. And I'm not doing anything to really like, like it literally is updating basically once a frame, if that. Depending on how far I move it or how much of an update it is. This is hard to work with. And we're only talking to three quarter of a million polygons here. You start getting uh, into these kind of models and meshes. And this is this is the, the kind of levels people work at in the world of game development these days. You know, you do a retopo later on. Now, great, it, the good news is the sculpting tools are quite a bit faster, but the editing of mesh tools, they're abysmally slow in Blender 2.80. And this is definitely slower than 2.7x was. So now we're going to go into Blender 3.0. Again, this is under development version of Blender. This is an alpha version that we are looking at today. And we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to switch into edit mode. And I'm going to do subdivisions on this guy. Sub, divide. All right, so there we go. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And you'll notice this last subdivision quite a bit quicker than the last one. And we are now up to 786,432 tries, just like the other version. I click here, click off, we got nothing selected. I'm gonna do a box select and I'll make sure, just to keep this like even unfair, I'm gonna grab more vertices. And now we're going to do a G and move things around. That you can actually work with. So right, here's what we're dealing with now. Blender 3.0, mesh editing, substantially faster. So there, 2.8. Uh, 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 <laughs> three. So again, if you are doing polygonal modeling, this is going to be a huge deal for you. And I would actually, I, I would ask you, am I underselling it by saying three times faster? Because that was what I actually saw from the original developer quote, editing mesh up to three times faster. This is more like 10 times faster to me. Now I can actually run this and go, and you'll see here 24 frames per second. And then when I start moving things around, we're getting between, say, six, six frames per second, maybe a little bit higher sometimes. We're getting about six frames per second. And what we're doing over here, same deal, is what we're getting is uh, completely broken. So 22 frames per second, it's telling us 20, it's, I think we just basically breaking the frames per second counter. Because eventually it will actually drop down to a much more accurate one. There we go, one frame per second. One frame per second. Pretty consistent, one frame per second. So you're looking one frame per second or six plus frames per second. That's six times faster that we're seeing here. This is a huge deal. The, the cool thing here is in Blender 3.0, there's actually more speed improvements that we're going to see in just a second. We've got a couple of other pieces of news to talk about as well, but I thought that this one was definitely for game developers at the very least that are doing polygonal modeling. This is going to be a huge move forward. And I did find the one major area where uh, Blender 2.7 to Blender 2.8 got really bad was mesh editing and Booleans. 
Both have been fixed now, which is nice to see. Now, this actually doesn't come out from the middle of nowhere. Back in uh, May, they actually did a blog on their developer blog, basically talking about how mesh editing optimization was in progress. One of those areas where they're going, and they also just straight out admitted that 2.8x, there have been some performance regressions with mesh editing that haven't been addressed. So developers are aware of it, and they are working on it. So this was something that has been in process for quite a while. But 3.0, uh, that's where we're actually seeing some of the changes there. So uh, definitely good progress in that regard. Uh, by the way, if you wanna go ahead and check things out for yourself, you do have the ability to go back and download any version of Blender at any time. Uh, that's actually pretty nice, up to and including uh, the end of the 2.9 branches right there. And then the developmental branches are also available on Blender as well. So that is, uh, if you wanna go and check things out, you can do so no problem. Now the other nice area, and this is coming from Blender Nation News, which is really tiny in my screen for some reason. Um, they've also talked about uh, Blender getting significant performance boost uh, when it comes to sculpting performance as well. So performance increase can especially be felt on base meshes upwards of 10,000 faces with the patch more efficiently calculating uh, normals via function that operates on a subset of faces rather than the whole mesh. So if you're doing multi-res sculpting, there's also a performance improvement there as well. So not just editing of meshes gets better, uh, multi-res sculpting gets better as well, which is definitely nice to see. Also, some more Blender news, completely unrelated to the performance gains, but not really worthy of its own video. Uh, Canonical is now offering Blender support. Now, Canonical is a name that probably sounds familiar to you, especially if you are a, a Unix user. Uh, they run Ubuntu. Uh, the, the Ubuntu Unix dis distribution is Canonical. And what they basically are is a veneer of uh, support for traditionally free software. So if you get, say do uh, Ubuntu installs in your environment, but you need to have support or nobody's gonna buy into using that operating system, well, that's where Canonical steps in. Well, the cool thing here is uh, Canonical are going to be doing uh, paid support. So basically, if you need commercial support for Blender, if you're in a studio and you run into problems and you need professional experts to handle this stuff, uh, they are going to be handling that stuff right here. So this is also going hand in hand with the LTS or long-term support versions of um, Blender that have been released as of recently. Those are the stable ones that if you're doing a long-term uh, project and you want a stability in the, your, um, your software, you use the LTS version. Well, those are the versions that they're going to be offering support on. So Canonical agrees on building and maintaining their own Blender services organization based on their trusted uh, Ubuntu advanced platform. Revenue from the service will be partially shared with Blender, then invested in core Blender development and public support for LTS releases. Aside from linking to Canonical service on Blender.org, there's no obligation from Blender to participate in the service contract. So basically, they're going to set up their own professional services team to do support for Blender and a portion of the revenue from that support feature will go back into Blender to help sustain those LTS versions. It's a very nice symbiotic relationship there um, and definitely worth checking out. So if you want to see more about Canonical's Blender support, it's available on Ubuntu.com. Uh, also, there is an article up, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on this one, but Ubisoft talked about their usage of Blender uh, with Rabbids. Ubisoft is now a sponsor of Blender, Ubisoft's animation division at the very least. Uh, they released a um, collaborative multiplayer or multi-user version of Blender. I actually covered how to use that in a different video. Um, they did a kind of a bit of a write-up of how their experience was working with Blender. So if you're interested in jumping into that, that is available now as well. Um, so you can see how they're using Blender, what they thought of it, uh, what they've done with it, the add-ons that they've created, and so on. Uh, it's an interesting read, definitely worth checking out. Now, these last two things, the canonical thing and the, um, uh, the Ubisoft thing, probably don't qualify as stories on their own. Uh, but put all together, definitely worth checking out. And these performance, these performance enhancements, these are at the core level of things. It is definitely nice to see Blender performance back. And once again, uh, we're talking some pretty substantial gains. Uh, you know, title said three times, but to be honest, my actual experience was six times performance gain. Now, when it comes to benchmarking, benchmarking is a very scientific process, and I put no science into it. I literally just ran two versions of Blender side by side. I wasn't going to actually show Blender 2.79 in the equation as well, but that's not really fair anymore uh, because of the rendering technique. Uh, they, they, we added E the real-time renderer since. So it's not really a one-to-one -one comparison, but it definitely was an area of regression. 
And even the Blender team themselves are admitting it, uh, that performance definitely got worse between versions. So now we're getting to the point where Blender 3.0 should, in theory, be better in pretty much every single way than previous versions. And, and that's, that's definitely a good thing. So anyways, that is it. Blender up to six times faster at mesh editing. Uh, Multi-res sculpting got faster. Canonical is offering official um, support for Blender LTS versions. And Ubisoft has a write-up of how they're using it in their animation studios to create their Rabbids work. Let me know what you think of the performance gains. Did you try it out yourself? And if so, what kind of gains did you get yourself? Uh, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.